In today's episode, we're going to be reacting to some creepy TikTok videos. Let's get into it. Y'all are not even going to believe this crap. There is an app where you can buy sunlight at nighttime. An app where you can order sunlight because they are using satellites in space to shoot sunlight at people when you order it on the app. Before we talk about just how ridiculous this thing is, let me go ahead and first off say it's not sunlight. They're probably just shining a flashlight on y'all. Second, what about the birds and the animals and the bugs? You know, light pollution? I already can't see the freaking stars where I live. It literally feels like the scientists are trying to play Let There Be Light. Now, this is just ridiculous. Now let's get into how stupid this really is. This part will lose many of y'all. Satellites or sata loons? You think I'm reaching? Why are all these satellites just falling down with a balloon tied to them? It goes so much deeper than this, y'all. Who's the biggest purchaser of helium in the world? None other but NASA. Yeah, we know stink time. You know, a long time ago, it was really easy to find all this stuff on Google, and now it's incredibly difficult. Anyways, why is NASA the owner of the world's largest helium reserve? It goes even deeper, guys. It's because space is not what you think it is, and gravity does not even exist! I don't know how so many of y'all have not heard this by now, but gravity is still a theory and unproven. If it was true, would it not be proven by now, by the scientific method? And lastly, Einstein himself put out a reward for anybody who could prove gravity, and it's still gone uncollected. Again, it's very difficult these days to find things on Google, but I did find it. He also became a wanted man when he did this. So why do things fall down? Density, mass, the same way an ocean can be held down and a butterfly can fly. I'm gonna be mad as heck when I'm trying to sleep and someone's on their phone ordering a giant spotlight. 2024 is laughing ass right now. They're like, y'all thought aliens was the worst we could do? Now, I actually looked into this a little bit, this app. It's called Reflect orbital and it's not really an app yet it's more of a concept design the big advantage that i seen from it that they were advertising on their website is it's really made for like solar farms so if it's nighttime you can still feed your solar panels energy let me know what you guys think about this this is shooting out superheated thrust did if i go back if i go back let me just go back a second this railing right here, have you ever seen what a tornado does to a metal fence or a tree or a telephone pole? It ties it in knots. It turns trees into splinters. And a tornado, a strong one, is like 300 mile an hour room temperature winds. Well, this is 17,000 minimum miles per hour, according to NASA, superheated thrust. And nothing happens to this. It just stays there i mean this should be pulverized it should be atomized i mean i was always told that there's like concrete funnelings that go underneath the platform to kind of project all of that force and heat away from the unit i have only recently been more aware of this creator flat earth dave let me know what you guys think of him do you guys like his content would you like me to play more of it i'm i'm kind of on the fence yo what's up did this guy right here just catch a stargate going right in front of the sun y'all watch this this is going to be the most insane video you've ever seen. All right, here we go. Take a look at it. Keep watching. It's going to It's going to turn. What is that? Seriously, what is that? Hold on, let me look. I'm just saying, man. That's uh That's pretty wild. And look, it's got Man all right, now I'm gonna go back and forth with it so we can take, you know, a closer look at it. Hold on. I mean, what is that? It looks like a stargate, like, floating through, doesn't it? Whoa. Dude. That's crazy, man. I mean, really. I'm sure there's someone out there that can explain exactly what that is, but if even if I seen this with my own eyes, I'd probably think that that's like a UFO because it's it looks massive and it's just the way it's moving. That would be a really exciting catch to me if I would see that in person. And I mean, it's still kind of exciting and really fun to imagine what it could be seeing it on TikTok. 
because in my mind that could just be a massive spacecraft and there's other spacecrafts following it. it it's really cool looking i'm sure it's some kind of natural phenomenon but to me that definitely does look like a ufo just floating in front of the sun let me know what you guys think it is or if you even know what it is they were told to set up a video camera in the darkened cellar and aim it into a pair of mirrors so that it could see only its own viewfinder while it was recording, nothing unusual was seen. But when the tape was played back, these remarkable images had mysteriously appeared. Other times, spirit faces were coming towards us. Needless to say, it is impossible that video feedback was responsible for these images. This is fallen angel technology. Humans cannot do this. What you're looking at, by the way, that's a hair. What you're looking at is an Apple chip, a processor chip under a microscope. It's literally impossible we can do what you're about to see. It's quite obviously magic. It's literally magic. Like it's always been since the beginning of time. Fallen Angels giving us crazy technology that we could otherwise not do. If you think that humans could just out the blue do this, then you are fooled. This is literally a copycat, a mimic of God's creation of the earth on a microscopic level. I mean, look how the cities are laid out. Like in the stars, you can see a grid pattern, like an energy pattern that exists. Do you know how close in we are right now? This is so ridiculous to think that we could even do this. Our phones are literal black mirrors that we are holding in our hand. It's literal black magic. Literally, you can watch somebody else's life even further. If, if you're a hacker, you can hack into someone's phone and see what they're doing at the moment exactly like a crystal ball in a diviner. Really quickly, just for perspective, this is the zoom out. Like how small this is, is freaking ridiculous that we could ever even, you know, create at such a small uh, microscopic level. It is not human. I'm telling you, it's not human. The following footage is from a man with the handle name of The Captain. He's investigating an urban legend of folklore story out of Ohio. This one centers around Crybaby Tunnel, which is a tunnel underneath a set of railroad tracks in Ohio. The legend goes that a mother and her baby lost their lives and were thrown into the creek either by accident or intentionally from the railroad tracks. And to this day, when you drive through or walk through the tunnels, you can hear the baby crying. Well, he went to investigate and he captures something truly chilling on camera. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Place called Crybaby's Tunnel. It's a, a place. It's local around my area, and they say she got hit on the tracks with her baby, or, um, or her body was dumped right there in the creek, creek down here. There's something dead right there, bro. There is something dead right there. A dead deer. It's a dead deer. I've been out here forever trying to get stuff though. This place is spooky. Is anybody out there? Oh, hell no. Hell no. 
Hell no. Hell no. Bro. Hell no. I know you guys heard that. I know you guys heard that. Oh, I ain't going down there. If you guys think I'm going down there, you're crazy. You're crazy. You guys are nuts if you think I'm uh, making my way. It's so damn cold. Oh. Yeah, I'm out of here, bro. I'm hearing shit behind me. It's cold. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'll have to say, that seemed like a very genuine reaction. I, I really think that this is a real video. Now, does that mean that I think that that's an actual paranormal moment caught? I'm not 100% sure. When I see places like that that are covered in graffiti, it just tells me that there's a lot of people that gather around that spot. Who's to say that maybe there's some kids or something out there tagging and they hear some guy coming up and they're like, well, let's mess with him, you know? If I were to go out there to film this, I would probably have to at least try to find out where the noise is coming from. Anyone in Ohio familiar with this? And if you are, have you been to investigate it yourself? Please let me know in the comments because I wouldn't mind exploring something like this if I if it was in my area. Hey, if you haven't done so already and you're enjoying the video, go ahead and give it a like. In today's video, I'm trying to reach 850 plus likes. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. For everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. Man, that thing just looks like a living loogie. That's re that's really nasty. What was this mysterious circle that appeared on radar the other day over Mexico? I mean, as you can see, this thing's pretty damn huge, and there's been a lot of speculation as to what it could be. And I thought to myself, well, it looks a lot like CERN's Hadron Collider. I mean, obviously, you could see some similarities, right? And I thought to myself, well, it is Mexico, and it has a lot of similarities to the Maya calendar as well. And I'm sure we're all aware of the random anomaly that kept appearing above Antarctica, which Ventusky just so happened to label as a glitch even though ironically they never did that before. But regardless, this area of Mexico was not renowned for any Mayan civilizations. But I did manage to see the same exact thing appear on radar back in 2020. And there has been recent reports and photos taken of the same exact thing appearing on radar when Hurricane Burrow just so happened to cross over as well. And ironically, it always appears in this said location, so I did a little bit of digging in this location. And I found this radar site that appears in the same exact location. Looks just like this from the outside. And then I just so happened to find an article that was associated with this radar site. And supposedly some meteorologists gave some clarification as to what it could be. As you can see, while it sparked plenty of online speculation, meteorologists were quick to explain that it was simply a standard glitch that could happen with range testing. But meteorologist Robert Spetta explained on X, then Twitter at the time, this is a range test in quotations, it basically is a computer program running data through the radar to confirm the radar works in all directions. He said that supposedly he's run this test before while working with weather radar and that it's a pretty standard maintenance. But I can't find anybody that actually works at this radar site that has actually commented on what it could be. I guess there's plenty of other explanations for irregularities on weather radars. According to MetService, the National Meteorological Service of New Zealand, weather radars can also supposedly pick up interference from things ranging from the sun to temperature inversion or even other radio transmissions. Apparently, strange anomalies appear periodically on meteorological maps, kind of like the one that I mentioned above Antarctica. But then again, those two anomalies being compared to each other really doesn't make sense. Those two anomalies are drastically different than each other. Well, who really knows, to be honest? I'm curious as to what everybody thinks about this. It just seems like this year is the year of the anomaly. Honestly, I would really like to know what that is exactly. It looks like a UFO. It kind of looks like Tony Stark's chess piece a little bit as well. And if you have any idea what it is, give me your best guess because I am curious.
check this out y'all look what was recorded in the skies of Atlanta Georgia have you guys ever seen this before look at this remember we've been seeing faces in the sky lately look at that y'all it's changing directions it's looking all over wow that's got to be more than just drones y'all y'all think look at that is that coming out of the sky is that in the class i don't think those are drones y'all i don't believe those are drones that's got to be something more to it it looks like it's in the sky i mean clearly that is drones the thing that I find the most interesting about this is there's no longer going to be billboards. It's going to be drone-based advertisement. That's what comes to my mind. And this is just the first stages of it happening. And could you imagine being someone that's on like an island and you're not familiar with the world outside of your island? If you were to see something like that, like if maybe there was a boat far off in the distance and they were having a drone show and they had something like that, those people on the island would probably think that that's a god looking down at them. But let me know what you guys think about this technology do you think that this is cool i i do kind of think it is cool looking there's a lot of things that people can do with these drones that make them look really neat and it possibly has the ability to fool a bunch of people in the future making them think they're seeing things that aren't actually real famous actor pedro pascal is currently going viral and is receiving a lot of hate because of a situation that took place a few weeks ago so like I said, around a few weeks ago, Pedro Pascal, along with some other famous actors, were at a convention answering some questions for a new movie that they are starting to film for. And there was a moment that people thought was weird when Pedro Pascal actually started to like rub on his female co-star's arm. Quickly, his female co-star Vanessa Kirby noticed that he was like rubbing on her arm and she immediately like grabbed his hand and started to hold his hand, seeming like she was actually like comforting him because it seemed like he was going through like some sort of anxiety attack. A bunch of clips of this entire situation have like started to be spread across social media and a lot of people just feel like Pedro Pascal was like very weird to do this to his co-star and people feel like she looked like very uncomfortable. Now to me it seems like the both of them actually have a very close relationship and it is also being reported that Pedro Pascal actually suffers from severe anxiety and holding someone's hand like this actually like calms him down so to me it just seems like a friend helping out a friend you know calming him down because there was like a big crowd in front of them as well and they were answering questions on the spot but this is definitely a very interesting situation this is something that's been running on my tiktok page for a couple of weeks so i decided to add this in get some opinions in the comments i personally i mean if the other person was okay with it i don't think that there was anything weird going on especially if this guy suffers with extreme anxiety but as far as him being a creep or a weirdo i don't really think that he was if he's having an anxiety attack and this person knows about his situation of course they're gonna help him out you know well let me know in the comments what you think do you think he was being a creep or do you think that this was just a genuine moment of someone helping someone out i kind of fall on the lines of believing that let me get to i gotta i'm gonna i gotta film this angie there ain't nobody ever gonna believe it until you see it. Look, I was outside, you know, been mowing the yard and been pedaling around. And the other day I walked by and I noticed it was sticking up. I thought it was a tree root or something. Whatever it is, it's got a big giant fucking fingernail on it. And you ain't gonna believe it. It was just sticking up beside the tree and I just, just happened to come by and walk by it again and was digging around on it, see what it was. And, you know, I, th I thought some kind of crystal rock or something. Y'all ain't gonna believe this. Now, y'all tell me what y'all think it is. It looks like a big petrified toe. I mean, I'm gonna pick it up. I ain't gonna hurt nothing. That is. Ooh, that's solid up in there. That is a petrified. Bigfoot toe, or 
somebody's thumb. It is freaking huge, whatever it is. I'm coming. Give me a box to put it in. I had to show y'all first. What do y'all think? Of it? No. I'm not going to lie. That really does look like a toe or a big thumb. I would really like a follow-up to this video. Hopefully, he sends it in and has it tested. I would really like to know what was that. Could it have just been a mushroom that perfectly formed itself to look like that? But that looked like it had a full-on thumbnail or fingernail. That just looked like a, a, a thumb or a toe. What do you guys think that was? That's kind of surprising. If he found a toe there, he might want to start digging around that spot. There might be a whole body down there of something that needs to be discovered. Have any of y'all seen this video at all? It's a uh, UF around the world, UFOs around the world. That's that's the page. Uh, it's gaining traction. Um, and I'm gonna read this. Planet-sized spaceship heading towards planet Earth to reveal themselves. That was 2027. Um. And there's a confirmation from, uh, I guess, authorities about this. And we're about to get disclosure, or we're about to get the Project Blue Beam, or, uh, it's that, that 2027. See, I've been a person that said that something will pop off 2026, 2027. And maybe they're rushing it with, you know, Elon Musk trying to hurry up robot production. But everything will collapse the time when they're able to do it for our replacements. The dollar will not fall until then. So I'm gonna tell you, anyone who's in crypto right now, November will be a great month. So start buying your crypto. But, but, let me um, let me say, this is a, a Twitter space conversation. And go watch this video. Um, But after, after you guys watch this video, come back to this page and I wanna know, do you believe this? Do you believe we're about to have UFO disclosure, alien, disclosure do you really believe there's a spaceship gigantic spaceship headed towards earth and that will arrive of 2027 also i recall that scientists were talking about a certain asteroid apophis that could possibly hit around that same area or 2028 29, something like that do you think there's any correlation to this what do you think do you think it's just another distracting mechanism it could very well be a distraction method to keep our eyes and ears turned to them and away from whatever else is happening in the world or it could really be a talk about a giant spaceship coming to earth just like that thing we've seen floating in front of the sun what if that was the spaceship that they're talking about you know and it's just going to take that many years to get here that would be interesting but overall i have a feeling it's gonna be just a show nothing's really going to come out of it there's just going to be words tossed around very loosely and nothing confirmed it always seems to be that way
I don't know why she was just recording randomly, but that would be a very horrifying catch, and then I would have some talking to do to that person that's supposedly bedridden. But that was kind of creepy, I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting like a really scary jump scare. <laughs> Wait, you buy your own ticket? You can... <laughs> You can put that you're a kid, <laughs> or you can do senior citizen. Do y'all see that? What was that? Did you see that? Yeah, what was that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Am I tripping? What the fuck was that? Did y'all see that or no? Or, or did I only see that? I saw it. But I wonder if they saw it from their end, or that was just me. What was that? What was that? It was like white smoke, huh? No, there's like, no smoke here. Maybe like, if I went like that. No, it was like a... That was... Scientists have discovered a planet planet that they are dubbing a freak of nature and we're gonna talk about it right fucking now small panic now i use the term planet loosely because to be quite fucking honest with you they have no idea what the fuck it is their best guess is that it's either a low mass star or a brown dwarf it's not acting like one though because it is literally on its way to escape this galaxy you heard me fucking right it's flying one million miles per hour and apparently it sounds like they discovered this shit by accident now, I understand that planets move, right? Especially if they're around a star, which is the reason for days, nights, seasons, shit like that. And they all go at their own rate, which is why a day on Jupiter is not the same rate as a day on Earth. I have so many issues with this, though. A million miles per hour? A million miles per hour. What the fuck? Is there some sort of a galactic slingshot that sent this thing into motion? Or on the flip side of things, are we sure that this is a star or a dwarf or a planet? They say for fucking sure that it is not a comet or an asteroid. But what other planet in space do you know that travels a million miles an hour and is traveling out of its own galaxy? Are we sure it's a planet? <laughs> that does not seem like planetary behavior to me. However, what do I know? I'm not a fucking expert. It's so fucking cool to read about though. And I genuinely can't wait to see what the hell it does. <laughs> Dang, that kind of reminds me of the ultimate evil from The Fifth Element. If you're familiar with that movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. But other than that, I have no clue what it could be. This is the first time I've actually heard about this, so we'll see, I guess. If anyone has any idea what it is, leave a comment down below letting me know. Y'all check this out. There was allegedly a UFO crash in Northern Virginia. It gets even crazier. There were bodies reported with the crash. Sounds like Area 51, right? And this is right after all the UFOs were around the world on the 16th of August, including California. He said, I walked outside of work this morning to see two US CG helicopters, two Vipers out of Andrew flying in a pattern in a combat search formation. A buddy of mine who's a cop in the area says it reported a UFO crash with debris and bodies. And for some reason, it's not on the news, right? Y'all, it gets so much crazier, but first, my prediction in January 2024 was we were going to have alien or grade disclosure or some sort of disclosure. We open up the year at the Super Bowl commercial about the aliens and then the Olympics ending about the aliens. And coincidentally, at the same exact time almost as this UFO crash landing with bodies, we had on the news a, a military expert who said the US is ready. The US people can handle UFO disclosure. Before I play this, just remember, not everything is Project BB. Yes, some of the stuff is, but not everything is. And there's a lot happening under our feet right now. If you know, you know. Is the author of the new book, Eminent, Inside the Pentagon's Hunt for UFOs. In it, he writes, these crafts are not made by humans, and they present a very serious national security issue. You talk about this idea of these crafts being created to, quote, be friends from out of town. What makes you so certain that they're not made by humans? We know that the, the, the government never lies, right? <laughs> Vehicles not being made by, by humans, mm -hmm. if you will. That's not me saying that. We have scientists, some of the top scientists, that um, this is a topic where I believe America 
can handle the truth. And I think America deserves to know the truth about this topic, about your taxpayer money that's been spent over the decades to try to figure out just what the heck is going on. Look, let's get right to the point. We have many living entities around us at all times. Scientists are saying that Dyson spheres are now living entities. They are as thrones, the angels. So we have angels, we have fallen angels, we also have demons, which are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, which would be biological beings, and we have greys, which are manufactured by the fallen angels, and also somewhat biological, being inhabited by evil spirits. Which is why big secretive schools such as Harvard are literally studying alien abduction or grey abduction and finding signs of trauma and finding people who pass polygraph tests. There certainly is a great deception coming. And if you're wondering how to defend yourself against these things, anyone who's been abducted and said the name of Jesus Christ or free, Google it. And all these portals popping up, I think they have something very big to do with it. This is deadass a person. Yeah. They call it the Catman of Grenwick. Yeah. They call it the Catman. And this is a real per this deadass a real person. Okay, okay. It, it seems like an urban legend, but yeah. they, there's many people that take pictures of it. Word. So what the story is, it's pretty much this guy what you see in the pics fam mm -hmm. is literally a man covered like in dirt but he only crawls on his legs and he eats he eats rats pretty much do you know the story like the no i don't know the story so there's many stories like legends but this is the most valid one okay. people said one time i think he was just honestly just like a random stranger mm -hmm. but he got jumped oh shit. but he got jumped so bad yeah that like his his brain got messed up in a way that it put him into survival instincts of an animal. So the most basic survival instincts that are get food, move, yeah. drink water, survive. And from then on, I think he was paralyzed from like his hips down. This is dead as a real person. Like okay. it's not even, it's not even just a folklore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To this day, I don't know if he's still alive, mm -hmm. but around 2007, when the first sightings happened, there's so many pics, fam. Like really? he's just walking, not even crawling around, almost like a Black Ops 2 zombie, going around and just eating, eating? rats and walking around. And he can't stand. He's not like a human. And what? it's almost, you know, the movie Tusk, yeah, where, yeah. where oh, he loses the no. sense of being a human. He can only react as like he's a cat or like a like an animal. So what happened? He can just to make him? noises and he can just survive. That's yeah, all yeah. Can do. So what happened to him? Did they catch him or like it was just? There's no, what, there's nothing to catch. Like, yeah, fam, you can't really. What are you gonna do to him? He's not really breaking no crime. So I did a little research on this guy, and apparently, back in the 70s, there was potentially a Russian sailor that had mental problems that escaped some kind of ship. He was supposedly out there running around eating rats and things like that. But as far as recent things, there's no real recent photos or videos other than in 2007 when a couple of videos popped up online but it wasn't confirmed to be real or not at least from what i can find online if anyone has anything different let me know in the comments i just find it hard to believe in today's age if there is a cat man out there that someone even if he's not breaking any laws that someone's just gonna allow him to be roaming around mentally ill there would be people out there that would try to help him or get him help i would think right this guy john stewart reed he does music medicine his father was a scientist they were allowed access to the king's chamber in the pyramid of giza wow and you know the big box that's in there sarcophagus they put the frequency reader where you play a certain frequency and it makes a pattern yeah. they're reading the frequencies from the king's chamber and they put it in the sarcophagus and what it did was it formed different hieroglyphics weird ones that they've known before yeah from egypt is and that how they got the hieroglyphics in the first place their language i don't know it's frequency. oh my gosh <laughs> Dude, yeah that's crazy but he said something very strange happened. So years prior to that, he got in like a car accident, broke his back, and had to have surgery. And so he lived with like chronic back pain. Mm -hmm. And he said after they did this experiment with the frequencies in the king's chamber, his back never hurt again. And so he started studying it. And they take people with like diseases and chronic pain, and they play certain frequencies. And he says their blood gets pumped full of oxygen yeah. just from these frequencies. Wow. And it allows the healing process to happen quicker. And that's actually really cool about seeing the hieroglyphics through sound frequencies. That was actually really cool. And if it's healing people, why aren't people taking advantage of that today? We need to really be getting ourselves in there. Or at least replicate that, because that sounds amazing. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here today. As always, if you enjoyed any of the clips that we watched today, 
Links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.